but don't tell him because I stack them all the time. It acts as like a seasoning for this bottom pan. So uh, cast iron hack, maybe, maybe not. I put up a Q&A thing on my Instagram page, the tattooed dot mama. Also leave the link in the description box, of course. So for those of you that follow me on Instagram, you know that I do a lot of cooking with cast iron. Rarely do I use other pans. Uh, so I end up getting a lot of questions on the subject. So I decided to do a Q and A and that way the next time I get a question, I can just refer people to this video. Uh, but I just wrote down all the questions that I got on my phone. There were a lot of them, so I'm most likely not gonna get through all of them. I'll probably end up doing a part two. But the ones that uh, I usually get repeat of, those are the ones I'm gonna answer. So this first one is, I bought a pre-seasoned cast iron skillet. Do I have to season it? And if yes, how often and how do I do it? So yes and no. You won't have to do a major seasoning on it each time where you would be baking it in the oven to set in the seasoning, but you would do a, a mini seasoning each time. So basically what you would do is when you would cook the food, after you're done cooking, you're going to rinse it out in the sink with super hot water, then set it on the stove to burn off all the excess water and then wipe some oil in it. And it can be any oil of your choice. Okay, next question. Is there a special cast iron cleaner I need to use? No. Uh, if you're having a hard time getting the food off of your pan or if your food is sticking a lot, which will sometimes happen if you just don't have enough seasoning on it. Uh, it even sometimes happens with me if one day I cook tomatoes in it and then the next morning I'm making eggs. Uh, at this point you would just Put it in the sink, do the same thing, run the super hot water over it, sprinkle some salt, and then scrub with any scrub pad that you already have to wash your dishes. Just make sure that there's no soap on it. So, and then this kind of brings me to the next question, which is how do I clean them? So, uh, step one, you're going to rinse with the hottest water your sink has. Two, sprinkle some salt in the pan and scrub with your usual scrubbing pad. No soap, but I do sometimes use soap uh, if I made any, any type of fish. So if I made tuna patties or salmon fillets, then I'm going to put soap on my pans. And I know a lot of people out there are going to be appalled and upset, but I don't want fish in my uh, eggs in the morning. So it is okay to use soap as long as you're seasoning it again the next time. And again, not a full seasoning, just a, make sure you're doing at least a mini seasoning each time. So rubbing the oil after every single time that you use your pans and you will be fine. I promise people are like, I, my grandma never used soap in her pans. Well, your grandma probably, or your great grandma probably had to walk across the field to get a bucket of water and that is why she chose not to wash her cast iron pans with soap. But trust me, you absolutely can. The reason that you don't want to is because the the soap takes off the oil. Um, I mean, what's something I can bear? Like Dawn. Dawn's biggest advertising thing is how their soap is used during oil spills to get the oil off the little ducklings. Same thing when you use it on your cast iron pans, the soap works really well at taking off any oil that you've put on. So you don't wanna use it all the time, but you can if you feel that you need it. Oh, and the next, dry the excess water off with a rag. I usually only dry the back of it. Place the pan on your burner to evaporate all the leftover water and you want to make sure that all of the water is gone and evaporated before you go on to the next step. The next step is coat the pan with your choice of oil, except extra virgin olive oil. Don't use that because it has a very low smoke point and can become toxic, toxic if heated too high. Anyway, and you really can't add too much oil in this step. If you end up adding too much, uh, you will find that your cast iron will have a bit of a sticky layer and it especially happens to people on the bottom of their pans. 
just keep using your pan and eventually you'll you'll get the hang of how much and how little to use it's it's not rocket science and but there is a little bit of a learning curve and I can't teach you that part I can't give you the exact answer to use because I don't one I don't know what you're cooking and two I don't know what kind of oil you're using each time so again don't worry about if you have that sticky layer just keep using it uh, and eventually you'll get the hang of it and the sticky layer will just act as a non-stick surface if it's on the inside of your pan on the bottom it can become irritating especially if you're putting it down on your countertop you're gonna see like a oil ring on your on your counter so just make sure each time you put your cast iron pans down to just lay something under it so that one you don't get the oil ring but two if you don't put enough oil uh, you won't get a, a rust ring either uh, next question can I make soup in it you can make anything in your cast iron pans but I personally would not recommend making soup I don't make soup in mine I use uh, one of my copper pans or the one glass pan that I have uh, because that's just too much boiling and the soup will, will will really pull all of that seasoning from the pores of your cast iron so yes you can but no you shouldn't also if you leave the soup in your pans for too long you'll start to get a metallic taste in your soup and that is um, the rust so it's, it's your pan is starting to rust and cast iron is really susceptible to rusting so you want to um, avoid anything that would cause more rusting to your pans what size pans should I get if I'm just starting out so I would suggest starting out with one 12 inch pan so this is uh, my 12 inch pan this was my first one uh, but if you can afford it then I would suggest starting out with just two of these 12 inch pans and really you'll be set you don't you won't need anything else I have two of them um, but it's more of a nice to have not need to have another one that I have is just this little one because uh, these this big one does not fit if I have two of them they don't fit behind each other so I have to cook them uh, on the sides like this uh, but this one comes in handy when I'm cooking pancakes I like to put all the burners on at once and then just cook as many pancakes at a time to get it over with or not really to get it over with, but just to make it go faster. And one lid. Uh, this lid actually came with this pot, but I use this, we use this one for camping. It has the three prongs on the bottom so that you can do outdoor cooking. Uh, but I'll leave a link to where you can just purchase the lid by itself. So to completely start out, I just one 12 inch pan and one 12 inch lid to go with it so I like to have uh, my two pans out one for browning the meat and then the one next to it to start sauteing the veggies that way the cooking process just goes faster but again it's more of a nice to have not need to have the one I use most is this glass top lid and it's awesome it's great but you can't put it in the oven which is why I suggest getting the cast iron lid if you're just starting out because you'll be able to use it on the stove and in the oven. This is a nice to have, uh, again, not a need to have. But I'll leave the link to that one also for anyone that's interested in it. So the short answer to that question would be to start out with one 12 inch cast iron pan and one 12 inch cast iron lid and the links for both of those will be in the description box everything that I talk about I'll have a link uh, I'll have links for you guys okay next question can I make spaghetti so I grouped these three questions together because they're the same answer for all of them can I make spaghetti can I make chili can I make pasta sauce uh, I use my cast iron to cook all of these foods uh, because I use them a lot for non acidic foods I can get away with using them for these type of acidic foods so if you're going to be using your cast iron pans as your main workers in the kitchen 
yes, absolutely, you can cook these things. Oh, also, if you need to boil some pasta, then you're gonna want to use something else, so a pot, not a cast iron pan as well. But if, if I'm making something like Hamburger Helper, where I can make it into a one pot meal by adding some bone broth in the cast iron pan with the rest of the meat and the veggies that I'm cooking, then I will put the, the pasta in there to cook through. That's fine because you have all those other uh, things that are keeping up the seasoning with your pan as well. What foods can I not cook in it? Uh, soups, boiling pasta, uh, really that's it. Just anything that's watery, super watery the entire time. If it's, if the meal is mostly liquid, then don't, don't use your cast iron pan. Next question. This one I thought was so cute. Growing up, my grandpa kept his in the oven. Is that something everyone does or just him? A lot of people store their cast iron pans in the oven. And this is a really smart idea because if you're cooking something in the oven that you wouldn't be using your cast iron pans for example, cookies, uh, and you have your pans in your oven as well, then you would be doing what I was referring to earlier as like a major seasoning. So each time that you're putting your oil on your pans and then you're storing them in your oven, you turn on that oven to bake your cookies and your cast iron pans are also now setting in that oil. So that major seasoning would be uh, done at this point. So this is this is very smart of your grandpa and everyone should be like him if if they're not. If you own cast iron pans and you're not storing your pans in the oven while you're baking, definitely do this because all you're doing is uh, helping your, your pans uh, even more. Next question, can I stack them? So uh, the dancing cowboy, oh my gosh, I cannot remember his name. I call him the dancing cowboy. I'll leave his, his name will be right here. I will, when I look it up, I will Put it here but he says no uh, but don't tell him because I stack them all the time you can see I have two of mine stacked right now on top of each other my two 12 inch ones uh, what I do is I just put an extra amount of oil in this bottom pan and then it, it acts as like a seasoning for this bottom pan so uh, cast iron hack maybe maybe not uh, but yes I mean I stack them other people will tell you not to uh, I haven't seen any issue with it uh, but again that's probably because I cook with them all the time but my answer would be yes yes you can stack them what about the possibility of getting too much iron okay so for those of you that don't know one of the benefits of cast iron is that you you will absorb some of the iron from it, hence cast iron. So when you're cooking, your food will actually soak up some of, some of that metal. This is really good for you, especially if you are anemic. Now the only times that it would not be good is if you are the opposite, which is hemi, hemiochrom, hemiochromatosis. I don't even know if I'm saying it right, but that is a condition in which people's bodies already produce too much iron. So if you have that uh, symptom, you do not wanna be cooking with cast iron because that's not going to help you. It's just gonna hurt you in the long run. But everyone else, cooking with cast iron is really beneficial for you health-wise. What brand should I buy? Uh, Lodge, Grizzly, Griswold, Wagner, those are the ones that I'm most familiar with and the ones I would suggest. You want a thick, hearty cast iron pan. You definitely uh, do not want a thin one, a thin one because they absolutely will crack. Example, the Walmart brands or Sam's Club, Sam's Club brands, they're both very, very thin. And you can go to the store and you can see some of them are already cracked or just sitting there on the shelf. So you want a thick pan that can take a beating from you uh, throwing it on the stove, throwing it in the oven, cooking with it outside uh, when you go camping. So uh, again, Lodge, Grizzly, Griswold, Wagner are my top suggestions for cast iron cooking. Oh, you also don't want to, if you're a beginner, you don't want a cast iron lid that has uh, one of those screw top handles. So this is what I mean. This has a screw top handle, but this is a glass one, so it's fine. But if you had a cast iron lid 
with a screw top handle, uh, it's it's really hard to make sure that all of the water is out of that screw so it ends up rusting your lid. So if you're starting out, just get just get the one like this that is completely cast iron. This video is already getting pretty long. There are a few more questions here, but I think I'm gonna do end up doing a part two. Yeah, if you guys want to know more about it, then you know just leave your comments in the description box. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Share the video because that helps out the absolute most and I will see you on the next one. Bye.